it's Kay. Welcome back to Have Neat Home. Have you ever wondered what those settings on your crisper drawers were for? Do you want to stop your cucumbers from going from crispy and delicious to mushy and disgusting? Well today I'm going to take away the mystery about what those settings are for and how to get the most shelf life out of your vegetables. Stay tuned. Now before we begin, if you're not already subscribed, just click the subscribe button. It looks just like this and you'll become part of the Hub Neat Home family. I give home care tips and organizing tips every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you've seen my how to organize your refrigerator video, some of this will sound familiar, but if you haven't, you can watch it after you watch this video. I'll put a link down below uh, and as well as an annotation in there. Uh, you can see that video and that'll uh, talk a little bit about what's going on in here, but I'm going to go a little more in depth today about why certain things can't live together. So let's talk about the crisper drawers. Most refrigerators, uh, as a matter of fact, most that I've seen, I actually did see one with only one, but most actually have two separate drawers and therefore two separate things based on two factors. Um, and they usually have a little slider where the vent opens and closes. Um, that's to keep certain gases in and to keep certain gases out. So let's talk about what goes where. What you store in these drawers is dependent on two different factors. One is ethylene gas and the other is humidity. First, let's talk about ethylene gas. That sounds very sciencey, doesn't it? Ethylene gas. Anyway, ethylene is used in, uh, in commercial industry to actually make plastics because it's double bond is very reactive and things like that. And also, if you hydrate it, you can make ethanol, which is the alcohol that's in all your vodka, your beer, your wine, all that stuff. So it's a really kind of funky molecule. Um, it's a hydrocarbon. It's also a plant hormone that most plants are making. Ethylene acts as a hormone for plants the same way that hormones work in your body. It tells your body to do certain things. Uh, some hormones tell your body to like grow body hair or you know do different things. Plant hormones do the same thing to plants. So they tell plants whether to like make flowers, um, whether to drop their leaves, or whether to ripen and age. While most things you're bringing home from the produce section in the grocery store are making a little bit of ethylene, uh, a lot of fruits are actually sensitive to that ethylene, which means they can ripen too much and potentially spoil and some fruits are producing a lot of ethylene you need to know which ones go into which category so that they don't mess with each other's mojo. Some of the biggest offenders, uh, the ones that are making the most ethylene in your refrigerator probably are apples and peaches. Those are making a tremendous amount of ethylene as well as avocados. Actually avocados are actually very sensitive to the ethylene as well, so avocados and apples should never be kept close to one another. Uh, usually you're not keeping avocados in the fridge. Uh, I like to keep them on the counter until they're really, really, really ripe, and then you can get a little bit of extra time to eat that avocado. You know how it can go from like, totally perfect to like brown in four seconds if you don't use it in that perfect time. If you, you can get a little extra time by popping into the fridge. I've gotten an extra week out of an avocado that way. However, you wanna keep it away from apples because they will definitely overripen each other and it won't be a good thing at all. So these ethylene producing foods you wanna put in the fruit uh, compartment or you want to keep in the low humidity department because that will allow ethylene gas to escape and it won't uh, spoil everything in the drawer. Now let's talk about humidity. Humidity really does matter when it comes to uh, leafy greens and vegetables such as lettuces, spinach, uh, Swiss chard, things like that. Those things are basically essentially the leaves of the plant and they're filled with all kinds of moisture and that's what makes them really crispy and delicious. And and uh, when they have a chance for the moisture to actually get loose from the leaf, they can wilt and lose that really de delicious crispy texture and get really disgusting. So you want to keep a humid environment for those vegetables in order for them to stay fresher longer. These leafy greens actually, most of them tend to be extremely sensitive to ethylene. So storing your apples next to your spinach is probably not a good idea. You're probably gonna end up with wilted spinach. Now, I personally cannot remember which fruits and which vegetables go together, so I've created this sort of cheat sheet that I'm going to leave in a link down below. You can download it from my website. It's completely free. It's a PDF. You can go and print it. You can plaster it on the side of your fridge like I have done or on on the front of the fridge if you wanna get that right up in there. And it just reminds me about which ones go where. I have indicated with an asterisk which ones are like extremely sensitive and which ones are like extreme producers of ethylene. Um, and also keep in mind that it's just a general guide. Some of the things 
on the list don't even really go with the refrigerator optimally, like tomatoes and potatoes really shouldn't go in there. There's an ongoing debate whether or not potatoes and tomatoes are allowed in there and do well in there. However, uh, I'm going to advise to keep them on the counter for now, but there is, seems to be like a hot debate going on uh, in terms of tomatoes and potatoes. Um, however, it is a comprehensive list that's probably great for those of you who live in North America, Canada, and the UK, and most places in Europe. I don't have information on um, more uh, exotic vegetables and fruits, um, but I could work on that if that's something that you guys would like, so just let me know in a comment down below. Some fruits, such as uh, cherries, are a particularly notorious one, aren't particularly affected by ethylene and don't really produce it. So it doesn't really matter where they're stored. Uh, as long as you eat them while they're still fresh, they will go bad eventually, everything does, uh, they'll be fine. So uh, that is not on the list. Now in our house, we eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and sometimes the crisper drawers can overflow a little bit and we need room to keep things that are particularly voluminous like cauliflower and lettuce. I mean, if you put one head of lettuce in the crisper drawer, it's gonna take up a lot of room. It's not gonna leave enough room for like your kale, your you know fresh onions or whatever. So I have been testing out this container from Progressive. It is a uh, produce container. It's good for uh, berries, carrots, celery, radishes, cucumber, lettuce, um, but I have been mainly using it to store lettuce because it has a little reservoir at the bottom for some moisture so that it keeps the lettuce from wilting. I've noticed that this container really helps keep lettuce fresher a lot longer. Um, it's available uh, from Amazon. I'll put a link down below. It's really, really handy. Uh, this one I like a lot. Now this one is the Fresh Saver from Rubbermaid. I got this one at Target. I'll also leave a link to this one down below. This one um, I'm finding works a similar method. It does have a little vent here to, for airflow, and uh, there is a grate here down at the bottom for moisture to fall into or for you to add it to. I don't love this one as much for other things aside from lettuce. Uh, the strawberries actually do really well in this one, uh, but other vegetables don't do that well. I find that like berries, um, in their own packaging that you got them from, from the store, do really well as long as you leave them in the packaging, especially if they have a little white little uh, sheet down at the bottom. That actually is gonna absorb ethylene gas and keep them fresher for longer. If you don't have that little container with a little white thing at the bottom that's gonna collect your uh, ethylene gases and things like that, this little berry container actually works really well. I don't know why, uh, but it keeps berries fresher for longer for some reason. I'm not really sure why it does that, but it's really cute and I really like it a lot. It's also from Progressive. It looks, it's like a mini version of the lettuce one. I've talked about the blue apple before in another video, but I'm gonna talk about it again because I love it so much. This is the blue apple, so if you are storing things that are producing a lot of ethylene, such as apples, I'm picking on apples today. Uh, this can absorb that ethylene and turn it into carbon dioxide in your fridge so that it keeps other fruits fresher for longer and things that are ethylene sensitive it won't bother them as much. So if you have to keep things together in some kind of way or close to one another, throw a couple of blue apples in, it's gonna help you. You do have to replace the packet after about three months. However, uh, the packet can be composted and, uh, and recycled, so it's not bad for the environment at all. So hopefully that takes a little bit of the mystery away from what those CRISPR drawer labels are for and what that humidity setting is for. Uh, if you like this video, press the like button, uh, give me a big thumbs up, and uh, let me know in a comment down below whether your CRISPR drawers say vegetable fruit or they say high humidity, low humidity. Let me know down below and we'll see what happens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.